DaVinci Resolve is among the best professional video editors out there, competing with the likes of Adobe Premiere Pro, and best of all, it supports Linux. However, its Linux version suffers from tons of problems, and today, we are going to address them in five different categories. Those categories are the installation process, system requirements, codec support, UI and plugins, and the overall conclusion. Also, join the Penguin Byte Discord community to be notified for announcements and uploads, ask all sorts of Linux-related questions, participate in polls and decisions like voting on what the next video will be, share your opinions and suggestions, and chat with me and the community. I also hold ranked game tournaments, casual game nights, regular VCs, and special events in the Discord server. Join with the link in the description down below. Starting off with the installation process, the installer itself is a .run file, which looks and functions similarly to an .exe installer on Windows. Honestly, while I personally would prefer a flat pack, the installer is perfectly fine. Moving on to the installation process as a whole, things get complicated. Let's take Fedora 42 as an example, since DaVinci Resolve is primarily intended for Fedora-based distros. Firstly, it's probably a good idea to install codecs from RPM Fusion using Fedora's guide. This can also be done graphically, as I demonstrated in my Ubuntu vs Fedora comparison. Now let's get into the rest. To download DaVinci Resolve, we'll first open Firefox. Then we'll go to blackmagicdesign.com slash products slash DaVinci Resolve. And then we will click free download now under DaVinci Resolve 20. The platform we want to choose is of course Linux, and if you're getting Studio, then you'll want to choose this option, but we'll just go for this. And this form, you don't actually have to fill out anything here, you can just put gibberish, so... I'll just put like a single letter for the required fields. You do need to put like an email address here, so you could just put like any random like email address that you could come up with, like x at example.com. Then just choose like a random state and register and download. You don't actually have to click the download button because it'll automatically start downloading. Once the file finishes downloading, we will open the file location, which will of course be in the downloads folder, and we will unzip the file, which will take a second. Now that that's finished, firstly we can close the Firefox window, and secondly, now we want to enter the DaVinci Resolve folder, right click, and click open in console and this will open this file location in the terminal, so that we don't have to navigate there with CD. Now, we want to install libfuse2 and libcrypt1. Uh, we're going to obviously use the terminal for this, but you can of course also use uh, a graphical uh, package manager like DNF Dragora to do the same thing. The packages we want to install are fuse-libs, and libxcrypt-compat. Now we click yes, or we type y. And now that's completed. If you just run the .run file, firstly of course make sure it's executable, you'll notice that it will give us an error. The following missing packages are not installed. Zlib. Now actually, Zlib is installed, and we can verify that if I try to install Zlib. It is already installed, but this installer requires an older version of Zlib, so instead we just need to skip the package check with the following command. sudo all caps skip underscore package underscore check equals 1 and then the uh, file name. So we could just copy this dot slash shift control v and then just remove the file path there we go 
this will launch the installer. So we click next. This is just the readme. We click next again. Obviously you have to agree to this. And now uh, it is ready to install. I'm going to show the detailed log so that it shows what it's doing. This takes just a few minutes. And as you can see, the installation has finished relatively quickly, and DaVinci Resolve, as well as some other Blackmagic design programs, are now installed on the system. But we don't want to launch them yet. Firstly, let's exit the installer by clicking Finish. We're going to change directory to slash opt slash resolve slash libs. And now we are going to move some problematic libraries to a disabled libraries folder. Firstly, we have to sudo make directory disabled dash libraries. Now that that's done, we want to move lib glib We want to do the same for libgio. And lastly, libgmodule. Now we can launch DaVinci Resolve. As you can see, here it is. We can click continue, click setup. Continue. 1080p works. That works. And we can choose our uh, keyboard layout. And now we can start DaVinci Resolve. And this is the error we get, unsupported GPU processing mode. I will get into more detail about this later in the video. As for Blackmagic Design's recommended distro, Rocky Linux, there are many more steps involved, although they do offer a custom Rocky Linux ISO made for DaVinci Resolve. The problem with this custom ISO is that it's based on Rocky Linux 8.6, a minor update based on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8, which released back in 2019. For reference, Rocky Linux 10 released about a month ago as of now. Clearly, the installation process is quite convoluted and can definitely benefit from improvement, especially regarding the management of libraries. Moving on to system requirements, as we saw before, you may encounter a GPU error upon attempting to launch DaVinci Resolve. This is because a dedicated graphics card is required to launch Resolve, preferably an NVIDIA card. And you'll want to use NVIDIA's official proprietary or open source drivers, because Novu isn't supported. You can also use a Radeon GPU, but it's harder to get working and can't access certain features like GPU accelerated rendering in the free version, so your best bet for now is NVIDIA. This is quite unfair to millions of iGPU users who can't access DaVinci Resolve's Linux version at all, while the Mac and Windows versions support integrated graphics just fine. Blackmagic Design needs to realize that Hollywood isn't the only one using Linux for video editing anymore. In fact, many regular people edit on Linux, and tons more would like to, but are only hesitating to switch to Linux since the only serious option for professional video editing, DaVinci Resolve, has these flaws, among others we'll get to soon. Other video editors on Linux, for example Kaden Live, support all kinds of integrated and dedicated graphics with no issues, so it's certainly possible for DaVinci Resolve to do the same. As for how many Linux distros DaVinci Resolve supports, Fedora-based distros are fully supported, an AUR package exists for Arch-based distros, and although it requires more work, it can also run on Debian or Ubuntu-based distros, so no issues on that end. The free version of DaVinci Resolve for Linux doesn't support the widely used H.264 video codec and AAC audio codec. Instead, you need to pay $295 for DaVinci Resolve Studio, and even then, you still don't get access to AAC, which doesn't make any sense. Once again, Kaden Live supports all of these codecs, so why doesn't DaVinci Resolve? 
The answer is three things, monopolistic patents and licensing, incompatibility with the GPL, and Blackmagic Design's status as a commercial, for-profit company. As a potential solution, DaVinci Resolve could loosely dynamically link to FFmpeg or GStreamer libraries on the system, which are already pre-installed on most Linux distros to deal with H.264, AAC, and any other troublesome codecs, while its proprietary media engine handles officially supported codecs. This would make DaVinci Resolve for Linux function a bit differently under the hood, inevitably requiring more maintenance from Blackmagic Design and increasing costs. However, it might fix the codec problem. There are still some legal concerns, but I'm sure that Blackmagic Design can find some sort of solution for those. Even if Blackmagic Design refuses to go through with this idea, since it is pretty risky and would likely still result in some sort of lawsuit, all essential H.264 patents expired this year, already allowing DaVinci Resolve to legally integrate limited H.264 support, while extensions will expire by 2030, and AAC patents expire by 2028, while extensions expire by 2031. There really isn't too much about the user interface to talk about, besides the installer looking a little old, which is fine. DaVinci Resolve does have its own user interface instead of, for example, using Libid Whitehead or Breeze, but while those two would look cool, Resolve is already quite beautiful and it uses the same interface across operating systems, so that's not an issue. However, it would be really nice if it got a title bar with window controls and maybe a hamburger menu to replace this atrocious menu bar. As for VST plugins, DaVinci Resolve for Linux doesn't support them at all, in both the free version and Resolve Studio, and while implementing VST support on Linux has its difficulties, tons of software on Linux supports it. This includes commercial, proprietary digital audio workstations like Reaper and Bitwig Studio, so Blackmagic Design is more than capable of doing it. This should be fixed for feature parity with Resolve's Windows and macOS versions. Overall, the DaVinci Resolve situation on Linux right now is pretty dire, but with enough effort from Blackmagic Design, it can be fixed. Patent expiration will also require some patience from the community, but we're almost there, and as I've previously mentioned, standard H.264 encoded video can already be supported. Not only that, but as Linux's popularity grows, so does its professional user base and the attention it gets from app developers, including large corporations. Broader hardware support would be mutually beneficial since it would boost Linux market share and provide millions of people access to professional editing software while simultaneously growing DaVinci Resolve's user base. Sadly, until DaVinci Resolve on Linux improves, I will have to continue using Resolve on a MacBook Pro like I've been doing, but don't worry, editing is the only thing that I use macOS for, and I use Linux to do everything else. I once tried switching to DaVinci Resolve on Linux, but while I did eventually get it running after lots of setup, I ultimately returned to using it on macOS because I had too many files to encode and the performance was horrible, partly due to the age of my HP Envy M7 and its NVIDIA GTX 940MX GPU. Ultimately, the best solution to avoid future situations like this one is to resist via LA's proprietary codec monopoly of H.264, H.265, H.266, and AAC. We need to start switching to free and open source codecs and formats like AV1 encoded video, Opus Audio, and Flag for lossless audio files, and DaVinci Resolve needs to fully support these open standards to make that possible. The more efficient AV2 will also be arriving soon with superior compression, better streaming capabilities, and potentially some new features like support for video alpha channels. If you really like my work and want to support the channel, you can purchase a Penguin Byte channel membership with three tiers. For $2.99 a month, the Little Penguin tier gives you a loyalty badge next to your name and exclusive emojis to use in the comments section, a shoutout at the end of each new video, access to exclusive channels and events in the Penguin Byte Discord community, access to every new video a whole day before everyone else, and I will reply to your comments before others. A step up to the King Penguin tier gives you all the perks I just mentioned along with exclusive members-only videos and polls for $6.99 a month. And finally, if you really love my content and want to support the channel as much as possible, the Emperor Penguin tier provides all perks of the other two tiers for $14.99 a month. Check them out by clicking the join button below.
subscribe if you like my content, and thank you for watching. See you next time.